Hi. Hello, everyone. How are you? Oh, I think I'm all the way around. Let it just see. Let it see. Hi. Good evening, everyone. How are you today? If you can see me clearly, please just leave a comment on if it's straight. <laughs> well, you're all welcome to um, our second art review session. And um, if you were here for the first one, you know how much fun we had. We, we had a lot of fun um, discussing knots and crosses and you, were all, you all rated it nine over 10. Um, yeah, it was fun, and um, this time we're going to be discussing Delivery Boy. I'm really excited about Delivery Boy um, because I just, I just really, it touches on so many issues that we don't discuss in Nigeria. And of course, it has my Jemima in it. If you know me well, you know that Jemima is my darling. We've had the opportunity to work together on um, different projects, and um, she's my baby. We have a sister really she's my she's my little sister so um it would be really nice um to to have her on today but before we bring her on i just wanted us to go through um as i said the responsibility is on you to um rate sorry oh we see nothing you can't see me can you see me if you can see me just leave a comment because i can see somebody right in here that you, they can't see me can you see me? Please say yes, so I know. Because I... Anyway, so as I was saying, uh, I'm hoping you can see me, because no one has said they can't. Somebody said they can't see me, but please confirm if you can see me. Oh, okay, that's fine, thank you. Um, so as I was saying, we're going to discuss um, Delivery Boy today. And as I said, the responsibility is on you, the onus is on you to rate the movie over 10 so for all of you that are here i'm sure you've seen the movie so please just leave in the comment section now or send me a dm and we're going to share with everyone what you've re what you've scored the movie over 10. so jemima will be joining us shortly um but um the idea behind this is actually somebody was saying to me are you going to do just nollywood movies i was like no as you can see i started with a movie that wasn't from nollywood it was a tv series that wasn't from nollywood so nollywood is not the focus for me it's just what i enjoy and what you enjoy watching and i just want us to experience you know um consuming arts together and discussing it so that's the reasoning behind it you know and um it's just for us to have truthful conversations about how we feel about what we're watching so it's it's not that serious it's just a bit of fun and for us to do something together we all know the pandemic is still out there and um, people are back at work people are on the street and it's not very easy so please 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 you all need to be careful and i just want this time to be us just bonding together that's that's why we're doing this so before we bring jemima on as i'll say again the onus is on you please rate delivery boy over 10 in the comment section and if you do have any questions as jimama and i are going please um put it in there and we're going to try to answer the questions for you so now i am going to find madame jimama and um we'll get started i hope she's i hope she's here let me just see if we can find her am i sideways please tell me if i am sideways tell me so that i can change the position of my phone um yeah because i'm using my phone right now jimama where are you Let's find Jemima. Okay, um, I don't think she's on yet. She hasn't sent a request yet, so um, I guess I'll just um, start talking and then when she joins us, we'll continue the conversation. Linda, hi Linda. I can see Joshua here. Hi everyone. Yes, you are sideways. Oh uh, yes, that's what I wanted you to tell me so that I can change the position. Unless you need to move. See, I'm, I'm getting better. Yay! Is that better now? Tell me if it's better. I need to hear from you. That way we... <laughs> well, we're waiting for Jemima to join us. She'll be with us shortly. 
um but i guess we'll just start the conversation <laughs> hello ab how are you hi ab the audio is low okay thank you let's increase that we're getting to it shortly is that better now i hope you can hear me clearly because if you can't hear me that will not be good right okay we're going to it now yay jemima is finally here so i don't even have to um wait <laughs> bless you bless you joshua okay yeah so we're discussing back to what we're discussing this evening we're going to be talking about delivery boy and um just to remind you that the the care art review session is going to be a, a bi-monthly event and we're going to discuss our favorite movies tv series books you know and at the end of it i'm always going to um announce what we're going to do in the next two weeks so it gives you enough time um to to prep okay jemima where are you you are delaying us yes i can see she's here but i can't see i need to add you my darling so Yay. Yes. What's going on? Can you hear me? Hi, Hi mommy. <laughs> Wait, I need to arrange my hair. <laughs> But the hair is nice. So you, have nothing, you have nothing to worry about. I love the hair. Camera. Hi, mommy. Hello, my Hello, darling. Mommy. How are you? Can you see oh, me? You look so pretty. I have to dress up. For you. Ah, you didn't dress up. I'm dressing up. Yes, the whole person now. Love the person now. I'm still trying to figure something out. So you can think you have to I, I, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say. It's okay. okay. Thank you so much. For, um, thank you so much for coming uh, this evening. And as you know, we're discussing delivery boy. And um, as I was saying to them before you came on, it's um, the Bikia Art Review session, and it's bi monthly. We're going to be discussing our favorite films, TV series, books. You know, and I picked delivery boy this time because I saw it made an impact on me. I thought it was a really and um, seeing you in your element, I was so thrilled. I think there was once when I was watching the movie, I saw that see my baby. You know, <laughs> it was it was really good. And um, I just like to say, um, you know, every boy. What I, really, what I really liked about it was it was the address things that we don't really talk about, and that's about on boys and the indoctrination into militancy, and also Ken's character, the person who was supposed to be a caregiver was the perpetrator, you know, and it's just the abuse of power, Kara became the perpetrator, and that really resonated with me because it's something we don't really discuss. So how did you feel, you know, um, being part of the voice to address these issues? I mean, first of all, hi, everyone. Thank you for coming on this live session. This is one of my favorite human beings in the whole world. Bikia knows the way to my heart, which is beans <laughs> <laughs> and food in general. <laughs> yes. Um, to be honest, as an actor and someone who's more interested in a lot of, will I call them political, delicate issues in the society that people pretty much shy away from, it makes me happy when I get scripts that somewhat give me an opportunity to represent something that is happening in the society that people don't speak about. I mean, oh. for example, with MTV Sugar, we're talking about, you know, people want to hide away from the fact that people are having sex. Teenagers oh. are having sex. Mm -hmm. Young people are, people want to shy away from that. But, you know, with MTV Sugar, we face it head on. And yes, sometimes we get backlash. Oh, you're encouraging people to you know, have sex, um, safe sex, you're encouraging young ones to do these things. We're not encouraging anybody to do anything. It's what's already happening. What we're doing is encouraging them to protect themselves. So getting projects like that with Delivery Boy, look at what's happening now. 
just today we've heard about Uwa that was raped and killed in Benin City in a church. We've heard about the little girl, the 11 year old girl in G is 11 or 12. No, she was 12 years old and she was raped by 11 men. So these are things that are happening that we don't necessarily speak about all the time. So it makes me happy when I get movie scripts that are not just, you know, the glitz and the glam scripts where I actually get to, in my own little way, portray something that's happening in the society that we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. So when I got that script, I was, I was excited. I was like, yes, abuse. Oh, yes, on both sides, because both yeah. characters yeah. were abused. I was like, yes, definitely. This is something that I want to be a part of. And I was, I was for me, it's a blessing. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely agree that we don't address it enough. And um, I love the way um, Nakash um, brought the story together. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't, um, what's the word now? Like, it wasn't done, like, it wasn't in your face, but it was very impactful. Yeah. And, you know, you just went with the story in, you know, in Pam and Samir's story. You went with the story and that was just what you did. So I really love that he did that. But how did you feel made the prostitute? <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> I actually liked it. It was, it was very different. It was different. It, it's, I feel like it was very out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Most of the feedback I've gotten is, wow, they never saw me playing that kind of character. Oh my gosh, Jemima, that scene with the guy outside when you were bent over. I'm just like, yeah, that wasn't Jemima, that was in Kem. <laughs> so, but I, you I, know I, what? Like, the scene I love, the scene where she had just been making up with her, you know, with her clients. Yeah. Um, sorry, you said people are saying they can't tell me, and I'm wondering why that is. Let me address my mic. Is that um, is it now? Please tell me. Can you hear me? Okay, I have one of those phone cases that covers the under of your phone. Yeah. Because I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, you have to do every other place. It's terrible. It's the best place. Yes. I, yeah. I don't want to drag my net service my service providers. I'm using my neighbor's <laughs> Wi-Fi to be on this Insta Live because they've been giving me a headache for like a month. Oh, bless you. But can you hear me now? You can please confirm. Anyway, as I was saying, um, I love the scene where she came out and she cleaned herself up. I was just like, oh. It was so... It was, it, I mean, it was in my imagination because you don't see... That, for me, it was storytelling. And I and I just love that. And then the scene where that that, that, that stupid customer that refused to pay, to pay her, even as yeah, got yeah. exactly. And but you know what? It was shot so intelligently. You know, with the no parking sign right in front, but you could see that. But you could still feel like it was dirty, it was yeah. dirty. But yeah. at the same time, it was also very artistic. So I really. Really enjoyed seeing that, and you know what just kept on going through my head was how how is Jemima playing this role of the? No dash, no dash made it easy. He made it easy. I think when we shot that scene, we were only like three or four on set, so oh, I, there amazing. was no reason for me to be shy. It was the DOP, the person there for sound, him as the director, and myself and my co-actor. So he made it very um, comfortable for me. I wasn't too concerned that, oh my God, too many people here watching me, one thing, one thing. And we shot it in the middle of the night on the street. So it was, it was like a ghost town. There was nobody outside. Yeah. So he, he made a lot of scenes, a lot of what was shot was made very easy by the director I worked with. He was brilliant to work with. He is brilliant to work with. And um, how did you feel about the teaching English? It was a struggle. I told him when he, when he, I was like, I don't know how this is going to work. And then, he, he, he explained it to me as Inkem is not uneducated. Mm -hmm. She's just a victim of her circumstance. Mm -hmm. she's, she's an educated person. She, there was a scene where she said even her brother, she wasn't doing great in school, but her brother was acing like every exam. Mm -hmm. So it shows that she's educated to a great extent. And she's from a, she was from an okay Look at her uncle. He was he had the ability to raise them. He was just a shit human being. Part of my cursing, but yeah. yeah so you're right, you're right. so he's like the pigeon sort of works. Is, I don't know. Even up to now, my pigeon is not great. But then it was worse, and he was like, "It works. It, it's just if it, everything about Inkem is fake. She's living a fake life. 
Mm. A fake, not fake of lavish, but fake life in the sense of, is it by 500 naira ashewo you want to have 45 million naira surgery? Like, you know everything you're doing is not real. You're really out here trying to be somebody that you're genuinely not. So I feel like she could have spoken English, but part of the package of what she was trying to, the picture she was trying to draw, that mm. pigeon entered it. It was, it's a different, it's a whole lot of variables. And did you feel sorry for him? Hmm, I've never thought about this. Did I feel sorry for Inkem? Yes, I felt sorry that she went through abuse. Yes, yes, I felt sorry for Inkem. I did. But I was also happy for her. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I, I feel like she got the um, the escape she wanted or that she needed. Mm. We'll get to that. We'll get to that, the, to that part. The, yeah. Yeah, because I, I don't know if I agree with. <laughs> I don't know if I, like, I agree with what you're saying, the escape that she wanted. But that's one of the things that really, I, I, I don't really like, you know. Yeah, but um, as you, as, you, as you pointed out, she was a victim of her circumstance and so was Amir and um, their meeting. One thing I'll do, I'll, I'll like to address there was the production design for, for Delivery Boy. I really loved, you know, the blend of light and everything just looked so naturalistic, you know. I actually felt like I was in those places, you know, that um, um, the characters were and um, the sound, I lo the sound was just beautiful and the music of yeah. Delivery Boy. Cheers did the music, sound, oh, everything, uh -huh. he killed it. It was, it was, I, I really had to give it that because... It went with every emotion and a lot of times we watch movies especially we that are um, players in Nollywood you watch a movie and really it's a moving picture and yeah. Delivery Boy did that for me and uh, I was just really happy to see that and even to see you as one of the, the, the main drivers of it so yes I really love the production design of it and um of course, as we said, the director was very good. But what was your experience like working with Nodash? What was it like? Because I it was with him as a DOP um, on a different movie, and um, you know, just seeing that, I was just, I, I was just really blown away. But for you, so what was that experience like? Did your phone fall? My phone <laughs> fell. <laughs> so what was that let, me, like? let me adjust it. Uh, working with Nodash was wholesome. I think that's the word that I find, you know, that describes what it was. It was wholesome. He's not just a director that comes on set to say action and cut. He's very, very, he's, he, he has depth. Nodash is the epitome of directing, in my opinion. He knows what he wants, and he knows how to make sure he and his actors are on the same page, not by telling you what to do, but by reasoning with you, so your thoughts align and you pretty much become the character. On my Insta Live with um, Jamal, my colleague that played Amir last week or so, we were talking about how Nodash would literally send you text messages. This is texting Jemima on a Sunday morning. Jemima, what do you think Inkem is doing on a Sunday morning when everybody else is getting ready to go to church, right? Or when you send him, you send him Merry Christmas messages and he's like, hmm, what do you think? in chem is doing now that everyone is festive and whatnot so he's very like he wants you to think and become the character not just get yeah. on set with your lines action cut so yeah working with him for me was a learning process uh -huh. more than anything so, and i'm happy so it happened so early in my career yeah when when was this shot it was about four five years ago Delivery oh, okay. Boy was among the first things I shot. I shot it right after my first season of Sugar. So this was Sugar. in like 2014. Okay. 20, 2014, yeah, 2015. And it's gone on um, to have a good um, time traveling to many oh, different yeah. festivals. It's, the response has been fantastic. So congratulations to you all for... for Thank being you, man. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it did come through that... Um, no, no dash. I, I, I really like it. As I said, I'd worked with him as, as a DOP for a movie and just seeing his work, it was just really nice to see his directing um, style. And I mean, there were some scenes that really, and um, the DOP, obviously, working with him, they created the most amazing pictures. So for me, as a spectator watching it, I was just like, oh, this guy's really went for it. And there yeah. were some scenes that, you know, just, I just loved. And I would, I would talk about those scenes. You know, like, um, okay, as I, I mentioned, the prostitute cleaning herself. 
then that scene of the man in bed with the boy, you know, yes. and this is you saying you're his, you're his father. You're saying you are my son and I love you. And I and love you. We do everything together. Mm -hmm. For me, it was just so sickening. Like nothing was really happening, but nothing had to happen. Nothing had to happen. Nothing, yeah. nothing else had to happen for us to see how sickening the whole situation was. And yeah. this poor boy who, you know, was raised in an orphanage. And then this man comes and says, okay, I'll look after you now. You're going to be my son. And then you see them in bed together. It was, it was horrifying for me to see, you know, but I, I love how it was presented. You know, it wasn't um, enunciating in any way. Yeah, it was, it was tastefully done enough to trigger you, but not yeah. enough to be too much. Indeed. So I, I really love that scene. And um, you know the hospital scene with, um, what's her name? Matron. Oh, God. Matron Dara. Matron Dara oh, Specialist oh, Hospital. Love, Funny I thing love. is, the actor or the person who played Matron Dara is not an actor. She was our production manager. Oh, really? She was our production yeah. manager. She just had to step in because the person who was supposed to play that character, I think, was not able to make it for some reason. And it was very last minute. And she was like, you know what? Let me do it. And she killed it. She yeah. absolutely nailed it. But, but what I loved about the scene was how it was set. Yeah. Because, um, it, was, it was dark. You could feel like that place was dirty. You could feel yeah. like that place had a smell. Uh -huh. You know, that came through just from the pictures. Just the picture. Yes, from the pictures it came through. And um, I, I really, really loved that scene. And, of course, um, the orphanage scene, too. I loved mm. it. I really... It was... It was heartbreaking for me to watch that scene because, you know, this is a woman who is supposed to be um, a sister, you know, upright in church and all that. And to see that she's doing so much evil to people in her care. And it's not far from a lot of the things that we see happening in our country and across the world every day with human slavery, you know, and um, um, human trafficking. It's, it's just it's just. It was just really, it brought everything home to the forefront and it just made me think. And I think for a lot of people who would have watched the movie, just to think about it, that people who are in vulnerable situations do not have to go through that. You know, the caregivers should not be the perpetrators. And that scene for me just nailed it. And there he was. When he went into the um, orphanage, it was not the intention to kill. It, he, yeah, it wasn't with the intention, with the to, intention kill. to kill. He was even going back that okay, this is his home. This is where he grew up. This is th that was that was like his mother, you know. And Very they much. had on him, yes, you know. And him finding out that all along she was the she was the beginning of all the mastermind, of and he's not her only victim. Yes. I think that's what completely triggered him. He he realized that he's not her only victim. There are many yes. more boys she and, has. And how many of them can he sold off? Exactly. Indeed, indeed. So I, I, I love those scenes. And now it brings me to the characters and the relationships. As, as I said, Amir, I really loved watching Amir and he just had the most intense eyes and yeah. he had the right balance of stillness and coldness. And um, just seeing the two of you play um, against each other and with each other, how, how was that for you working with him? It was absolutely amazing. It, it's still possibly one of my favorite, like, on set chemistry ever mm -hmm. ever you see that first that scene where in Kem and amir met for the same uh, first time where they ran into the same care camera uh -huh. that was the first time i physically and otherwise met jamal no dash oh. made it so that we never met until we shot that scene we never spoke we never met i was like no dash who's playing jamal he's like Who's playing Amir? He's like, you meet him on set. He made it so that we didn't know each other. So that first time meeting of, okay, who are you? That was real. That was, it was barely acting because I, I had no idea who I was, you know, shooting with. Oh, the idiot is right here. Jamal is here. <laughs> so it was the first oh, time hello. Hello, Jamal. meeting him. Yeah. And it was, it was, it was great working with Jamal. I mean, he might not agree with me. But I was learning so much from him on that set and on the job. Mm -hmm. He doesn't acknowledge it when I say I was a novice. When I when we shot Delivery Boy, I knew nothing. <laughs> so he was like my senior <laughs> colleague, pretty much. That did not come across. So so well done. 
Thank you. Thank you, mommy. So he yeah. made it he made it very easy. The feedback as an actor, you know what it's like when you're shooting a scene with somebody and you're not getting that feedback that will fuel your own performance. I had none of that of this. Like if anything, his performance is what probably made me do as good as it turned out looking. Yeah, um I do have some reservations though. And um I guess maybe because I'm such a hopeless romantic. You know, <laughs> and Nkem and Amir. You I wanted it happily ever after yes, situation. I wanted it to happen. I was just Aww. like, you know, this is like gold. This that would have been like gold for me. And I was actually quite disappointed that nothing happened between the two of them. I can Honestly. I mean I can see why you'd want that. Yeah. I I relate to that. When I read the script, that was my first thought. Like, why is she dying? This is like the person that like she's been waiting for this kind of relationship, isn't she, it? Yeah. No, but it wasn't even, I haven't even gone far to the fact of her dying. Like, you know, like them meeting in that second, I love that scene, by the way, the Kekekna prep scene. I loved it. And um, them going to her house and then she's seeing the strap on on him, the bomb. Mm -hmm. And um, she was not afraid of him. I loved that Nkem was um, presented like that, not to be afraid of him, you know, and he was completely taken aback and you could see that. And he even asked her, you know, they fear. You know, but I just felt they had this chemistry and I felt that that could potentially have been a romantic um, connection there. And why I really wanted that was because, you know, I just wanted to see some beauty happen for both of them. Both of them, because yeah. in her life, it was so sad. And in his life, it was so sad. And they are neutral parties, victims of, their, of circumstance. You know, they've had very hard lives. And this was the first time that either of them was actually meeting someone that was real. Like yeah. there was no, there was no um, pretense. There was no underlay of, of, of danger. That's after they got to know themselves. And, mm -hmm. you know, she just had this banter with him. And I just felt that it would have humanized him a little bit more, you know. If they had he, that kind of connection. Yes. You know, even though it, maybe it may not have been like a full on, um, uh, um, love story or, or whatever. But, you know, that, yeah. you know that scene where she, where she says to him, you never did before. You Before know, like, oh, nah, man. You know, yeah, so I just nah, man. a moment of softness hmm. between the characters, and I was really disappointed when I did not get, you know, that. that. So yeah, I, 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 that, that just, I was just like, no, this is not fair. You can't, you can't introduce <laughs> these two people, and you can just see that there's. I know so how much that chemistry on. build into and, something. And then they don't even do anything. That's not fair. Now you can't tease us like that. Yeah, and, you know. So, I, that was the only. Point. It was. I've like, actually no. never thought about it from this perspective. I'm always coming from the angle of they were both going through so much hurt in that very moment. And especially for Nkem, like I said, she was, Nkem was looking for a way out. Mm. I don't know how you see someone with a suicide bomb strapped to him and not be afraid because she couldn't care less. If I die, I die. Um, if I yeah. die, I die. That was Nkem's, even in the, in the, um, the promo video we did, she's like, Anything we want happen, we'll make it happen as long as my money completes. For her, it's just if I'm not if I'm not going to die and I'm going to survive, make sure I have my money to take me through the day onto the very next. And Kim mm -hmm. wasn't looking for joy. She didn't want joy. I don't think she felt like she deserved joy. Mm. She didn't feel like she deserved the good things in life. She just she was just going about it like that. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know Nkem more than I do, but um, for me as um, a spectator, seeing Nkem and for Nkem to sell her body yeah, to try to get her brother better and the sacrifice her brother made for her, I just felt Nkem's responsibility, her whole being, everything was to ensure my brother is okay. Yes. You know, I, I felt that and that was the only thing that would have given her joy, you know, mm -hmm. and then meeting this person who, you know, Nkem and um, Amir, their stories are different, but at the same time, they're the same, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they found each other. And so, yes, she may not be looking for joy, but I just, I just think it, it didn't come across to me that she did not want joy. She was not looking right. for it, but if it came to her, why she not? probably would and, have accepted yeah. it. And, and Kim was so fearless. You know, she was a fearless person, you know, and for her, the, everything that Kim did, like watching what you did was my brother, my brother, my yep. brother. 
So I just, I, I really struggled with in Ken leaving her brother. I really struggled with it, you know, because I just felt this is what in Ken's life is about. Everything about in Ken is this her brother. So how is she comfortable to leave this brother? You know, I really struggle with that. With that. Did, how do you feel about that? Um, did she struggle? Mm, I think, that, as I said, it was her way out. The reason why it was it was pretty much easy for her to say, my brother is sorted out. Jamal, I keep saying Jamal. Amir is going to make sure that he gets out of the hospital. He's getting his surgery. He can continue his life. I've done. I've paid my part. That's it's, for her. It was a case of I owe him so much. Mm -hmm. That sacrifice he made on her behalf that made him end up in the hospital. Her mm -hmm. goal was to pay back that sacrifice and get him out of the hospital. Once that was done, she didn't have any interest in being here anymore. I can't imagine the world of hurt that Inkem had gone through. For someone to end up every day doing the thing that was used to inflict pain on her before. Mm -hmm. It's such a decision that I, I, I've, I've struggled to understand. I mean, her first introduction to anything sexual was rape by somebody she trusted, her uncle. And this is somebody that woke up every day to go and do the work of a prostitute for as little as 500 naira. So she knew very well that she wasn't going to be able to do anything meaningful with what she was making from that job. But she was doing it anyway. That's somebody, for me, that's somebody that has given up. And it was just, it was pretty much a to fulfill all righteousness situation. So if, if she's able to tell herself every day, even if it's 500 I put in that donation box at the hospital every day, I'm doing everything I can to pay back my brother's sacrifice. So once you saw the window of opportunity, this is somebody that has the money and can make sure my brother is catered to. What am I doing here? I beg. Let yeah, me just but what I, well, I mean, like, she met him. I'll say, uh, let's give it, like, 48 hours. Was it 48 hours she met him or longer? Yeah, about 48 hours, about if 48 not less. Hours. So for me, I just, I just really struggled with, you met this man who's a suicide. You saw him, and he was going to be a suicide bomber. In fact, he is. You mm -hmm. know, he's probably killed people. He's had a very hard life. And this is your brother who paid, who made the sacrifice, I mean, for you. And now he's in hospital. How do you trust your brother's life with a, a, a suicide bomber you met 48 hours ago? What are the guarantees that this guy is actually going to look after the brother and actually going to do that? You don't know. Yeah, there's, there's actually no guarantee. I, yeah, I struggled with that because in Kem, you know, um, the way it was presented, and Ken, you could see her that in Ken's everything was this her one brother. So I just struggled with it so much when I watched it that in Ken will leave her brother for yeah. some yeah. for the eight hours and you're not really sure, you know, and go and kill herself for who? Kill herself mm. for who? You know, so that part of the I mean, I, I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy. Yeah. And I was smiling all through watching it. When he got there, I was just like, ah, no, 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 you can't. Come on. <laughs> Why would you do this to us? Why would you take us through all of that? And then, and Kim is the one sacrificing herself. I yes. really struggled with that part of it. And I just wish it was different. You know, as That's I said, right. somebody wrote here was saying to me, this is you are a helpless romantic. Yes, I am. Um, oh, yes, I you are. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> But hey, if, if 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 she didn't make that sacrifice, I wouldn't have had my badass walk in that hijab with the bomb. That scene, that's I love that scene so much. Oh my, I can't even begin okay, to well, tell you how much it, so, I love that scene. It was it was nice to see, oh. but in context, I really struggled. Yeah, with it. struggle really with it. Struggle yeah. with that. Yeah, and um, you know, I just I really just wanted to see and Cam and Amir, you know, walk hand in hand together. Awesome to into some sunset. Yes, and go and you know, be with her brother and make her life. And of course, I love... Okay, but one thing I love, Sha, was Amir at Nkem's uncle's door. Uncle's place. Uh, I yes. wish... Do you know what? I've allowed myself thinking a thousand and one different scenarios of what Amir could possibly have done to that man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I love how it's an open ending. They didn't tell us he killed him or anything. It's up to you. Figure it out. What uh, do you But think? you know Amir now, the Amir that they presented... That, exactly. That Figure that it out. Get creative. Happen. What do you think no, happened to him? It's possible that that guy would have <laughs> You know, I, I I liked that scene, but for me, I just felt like, you know, it wasn't, I felt like it could have been presented differently. And There's also the reality of painting it, if, if we had ended it that way, 
that's portraying it one way. There's every possibility that even after Nkem's brother had gotten the surgery and she didn't sacrifice herself, they would still have had a hard life. Possibly even harder than before because now she has two mouths to cater to. So it's very possible that after the surgery, it went downhill. Any, like, and there's so many ways it could possibly have gone. Okay, this is me <laughs> being the prophet of I know, I know, darkness. I know, I, know like that. I know it's a bit difficult. And I mean, I'm not, I'm not here to say that the most, um, the easiest thing. I just want yeah. us to be as fruitful as possible. But for me, I just felt like it could have been completely different. And um, even Kem was doing that and sacrificing so much. I just found it really difficult to take yeah. that she would actually leave her brother trust that care, he would do it in the care of a complete stranger a complete <laughs> stranger so I, I i i struggled i really struggled um with dealing with that yeah. but as, as you said you know i mean there's some people that would love it but for me personally i just felt that um it could have been different different Something, yeah yeah, but I really enjoyed, you know, the chemistry between Nkem and Amir. And um, I even liked, like, the... I liked the, the Malam, Malam Sadan. Malam Sadan, yes. Oh. oh, he did justice to that character. I almost hated him. I was just like, oh. You almost... I hated him. <laughs> I was like, how can you make you him so believable? Him. <laughs> I did. Yeah. And you know, you know, like, that... You know, like, him having, like, the little... Long thing. nails. Everything oh, was okay. just very creepy. Yeah, I was just like, no, no, it was just it very was just, creepy, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's it's so sad because there are actually characters like that yeah. in real life, yeah. And um, Delivery Boy really highlights that, and I I liked it. And as you said, he played it really well. And like, you could see that Delivery Boy was obviously a low budget movie, but the oh, yeah. execution, you know, it reminds me of um, this Hollywood movie. Um, I, I don't know if you've seen it. Whiplash. Flash. It it did re it, it did really well. It was a short film, and then it, it was made okay. into a feature. Um, it was oh. about. Delivery Boy was supposed to be a short film. Yeah. It ended up yeah. being one hour plus, and we're like, okay, why not go with no, it? The thing about Delivery Boy, I felt like we needed like another twenty minutes to it. To it. To to really fill the story, you know. And as I said. To me, it, it it was obvious. It was a it was a it was a low budget movie. Yeah, the execution was very beautiful. Yeah, and um, why why I talk about Whiplash because I remember that Whiplash started off as a short and then it got made into a full feature because of how good it was and you know how people responded to it. And for me, Delivery Boy was that in Nollywood where I could see that it it was obviously extended from a short. Mm -hmm. you know but i felt like it, it could have been extended even more a little more I felt like i felt like i was a bit cheated but and that's <laughs> because i like i liked the premise of it i loved the story of it and you know it was such an enjoyable film to watch and i wanted more so i felt like i was cheated by people like, have been asking if there's going to be a part two, part two i highly yeah. highly yeah. doubt it i highly yeah. doubt it <laughs> yeah oh somebody's left a comment here let's see what the, i liked the ending and the Action and Mary took says a lot as regards their arc. I wasn't happy when it happened though, but hey, okay, yeah. Sorry, Nodak, Nodak yes. broke a lot of hearts. <laughs> oh yes, he did, including Nodak is the heartbreaker. Yeah, guys, if you if you have questions, please just put your questions, and we'll try to take some of them. As I said, yeah. So um, but ultimately, it was it was a good film. It was a good film to watch. As I said, I loved um what he addressed. I loved the different characters, their execution. I, I, I really love that. Um, but and, and I've obviously told you what I don't like about it. But for you now, as um, the lead actress in it, if you had to change something about Delivery Boy, what would you change? Hmm. Um, this might make me sound a bit mean or wicked, but I don't think, I don't think the best... Um, <clears throat> punishment for people who have the heart to do things like that is death. I genuinely think that death is the easy way out. I would have loved to see Malam Sadan suffer. Mm. Same thing as the sister, sister, what's her name? Sister Mary. I don't know. Mm. I would have loved to see them oh, suffer okay. because yeah. death is such an easy way out and it's such <laughs> a pain-free death. Yeah, mm. like I would have loved to see them suffer and acknowledge the, you know, the evilness of what they did. Because for me, it was a case of, I'm not giving you an opportunity to 
acknowledge what you did and see that what you did is bad, I'm just going to kill you. I would have loved, I don't know how it could have been possible even to get him in a room and this makes me sound bad. Torture him to the point no, of confessing and accepting what he did. I always like to see people because yeah. it's one thing for me to say what you've done is bad. I want yeah. you to be able to say it. Like, do you see what you've done and do you see that what you've done is bad? Yeah. I want you to be able to say, yes, what I did is bad. It is bad and it should not have been. That, I, I guess that's just me being very anal about everything. Even right now with what's going on, everyone's saying, oh, castrate them. They should be death by hanging. No, death by hanging. No, they should experience what suffering is. Anyone who has the heart to make somebody else suffer like that deserves suffering, in my opinion. Death is such an easy way out. I mean, inject you and you, the person dies in how many seconds and that's the end. No sort of pain or anything no it's 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 mercy killing in my opinion it's like you're giving them a way out i want you to leave face the reality of your actions and what you've done and live the rest of your life knowing that you made somebody go through that hurt if you mm. find redemption in the end in christ and god forgives you that's between you and god but as a person i always need people who do bad things to be brought to the realization of their actions and if possibly live with that, you know, haunting them forever, knowing what they've done yeah. and make that, this is, I'm, I'm struggling. I'm still, even last Sunday, the sermon in church was forgiveness. I mean, I tend to forgive in a way of, I forgive you, but that's it. I cut you off, get lost, which is how I'm built. I can't ever be someone to forgive you and see that if you're bad, in my opinion, you're bad. People don't necessarily change. Maybe they, might adjust because they've noted that this isn't exactly what should be done. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, because seeing myself, I don't know what will make me want to put somebody through that or physical pain. I can't understand it. So if you have the heart to do that, then you should have the heart to live with the guilt of whatever you've done. Yeah. And would have liked to see, you'd have loved to see that come through yeah. in, in the movie. I would have loved, I would have loved to see the perpetrators be brought to justice. You know, and um, if that when that happens, you know, they're an example to society. Society, but there's no justice in Nigeria. Um, well, it's not, I mean, like the little <laughs> boy is not just a Nigerian story because yeah, um, that's true. It, yes, it's happening all over the world. You know, in in different ways. Yeah. You know, um, just you know, I, I mean, like you remember the movie Beast of No Nation? What the how they got oh, all those yes. children to be soldiers? You know, and. It's the same. It's the same as what Delivery Boy was saying. They got mm -hmm. those young boys and they brainwashed them and then they made them terrorists and Terrorist, you know, yeah. making them feel what they're doing was for Allah and you know obviously it was for the man's own personal gain and you mm -hmm. know in making money off it, you know. And another thing that really got me was they leaked, uh, um. Amir and Kazim living in such poverty, you know, like, yeah. I'm mean, like, look, see how they live. But they With all that money in yeah. their possession. Yeah. It shows you the level, the level of um, loyalty these boys are trained to grow up with. Because I don't know how I can what? say, yeah. I love this man. He's my father. I have $100,000 in my bag that he gave me to go and do something. And I'm living in this, I'm all, I'll jack up with money, in my opinion. I'll, I'll run away and make my life better. But that's the loyalty. They're tied to him so much, you know, that they're so loyal. Is it, is it, it wasn't really... I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say it's loyalty. It's more like the conditioning of their mind. Their mind. Yes. You know, uh, yeah. But, but I do agree with you. I would have loved to see a little bit of that, you know. Yeah. But, but ultimately, it did not happen. Maybe you people may give us a delivery boy to meet. Oh, I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it. Definitely another movie from Nodash. Nodash is not going to stop working anytime soon. Yeah. But Delivery yeah, Boy is over. Yeah. 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 Any, I don't, I, anyway, I can't say for certain. He might surprise all of us tomorrow and call me that is a script. Yeah. Which is more work for me. So, amen. <laughs> True. Exactly. <laughs> and, um, for in Kem, your character choices, is there anything you feel like you could have done differently? So much, so much. You know, it's the same thing when you watch yourself on TV or watch yourself in a movie. You always see one or two things that you start to think, oh, I could have done that differently. 
oh, I wish I had played this more, you know, this way or that way. But generally, I can't say that I'm, I'm, I'm beyond proud of my performance. I'm beyond proud of the entire project, knowing that this is something that was from very, very early days. Um, yeah, and the, and the fact that five years later, people are watching The Libby Boy and it still holds such depth and meaning. Mm. I mean, it's five years later. Even yeah. apart from the context of what the storyline is about, even down to the production, a lot has changed. You know, yeah. Technology has advanced. Everything, the way we tell our stories have changed over time. But the fact that five years later, it's still good enough to be viewed by people and get the feedback that it's getting. It's, getting it's, it's such, it's something to be very proud of. And, yeah. and that okay. makes me so happy. Okay, I do have a question, but I think you've answered part of it from Renee. Renee here says, Jemima, how were you able to analyze the character while being a novice? She's not, she wasn't a novice, but yeah, <laughs> Renee would like to. Yes, yeah. um, it was mostly with the help of Nodash. Mostly, with, like I said, working with Nodash was a learning experience. It was my second time working with Nodash. Um, so after MTV Sugar, I did another short film called Silence. It's not, it's not out yet with um, Bossel. She, she was, I met her on MTV Sugar set. She was our production manager and it was her short film. So she brought me on that one and Nodash was the DOP. And that was where he met me. So shooting Silence was pretty much my, audi my audition without me knowing. So it was after that, he sat me down. I was like, oh, I have a project that I'm working on. And I think you will be great on that one. And, okay. you know, from having conversations, we didn't just jump to set immediately. We probably had this conversation about wanting me on the project. I had several meetings with him, different conversations, and all that building of character where he's texting you, of what course, is she doing on a yeah. Sunday morning? All that happened over a span of about two, three months before we finally shot. Maybe not three months. About two months before we finally got on set. So mm -hmm. he... He had pretty much um, given me enough to have an idea of what character it is that I was going to play. He also helped me with, you know, movies to condition my mind to the mind of somebody who's been sexually, you know, assaulted or abused. So I went back and I was watching a lot of movies that had been previously done on abuse, you know, some mm -hmm. mostly Hollywood and French movies. There are lots of French movies about yeah. rape and abuse and they're gory, they're violent and they will shake you to your core. And he just told me, watch these movies and picture yourself as somebody who went through that and then put that into Inkem. So it was a lot of research on his part and my part. And that really, really helped me. And, and that came through. And I'll take... um. Oh, Peace is saying she can't hear me. I'm so sorry, Peace. I don't know what's How going. come I can't hear you? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll take one more question. Um, oh, it's actually from, from Peace for you. And she's asking, Jemima, what's your inspiration actually? Because you do, how do you do what you do so well? So can you share that with us? Thank you, Peace. You flatter me. <laughs> <laughs> what is my inspiration? I'm not even going to try to sound deep. There's only for any, like, for me deep. <laughs> to be honest, I just wake up and do what I have to do. I think yeah. it comes from being surrounded by the right people and getting the right jobs. I mean, if anything, the scripts I read inspire me. From every job that I've done, I'm very intentional with the roles that I take. I don't, I'm not, there's sometimes, like the whole of last year, I, prob I probably shot only two, two projects. And I'm okay with it because for me, it's quality, not quantity. I'm not trying to be everywhere, all up in your face in the most randy things. No, if I find a script that speaks to me as a person, not necessarily always trying to push, you know, the agenda of a societal ill. If it's a good, funny film, if it's a good, you know, feel good uh, script that I know people will watch and enjoy, I'll do it. So I'm very, I'm very intentional with the scripts that I pick. And I feel like the writers really need to be acknowledged. Right, good writers in Nigeria, people who sit and write beautiful scripts need to be acknowledged because 50% is done when you have a great script. For me, oh, it's easy to become a character when I read the script and I'm mind blown. Like, when well, the script is good, yeah. It's almost you've done my assignment for me. I just need to sign my name and I need to submit it. <laughs> so I will never ever... Yeah, I appreciate good writers. So I guess my inspiration is good writing, good scripts that either motivate me to want to showcase that character because I feel it's something we need to talk about 
or mm-hmm. it's a good enough, you know, a feel good script that I feel like it will it's it's good entertainment for me as the actor acting it and for you the viewer that yeah. watches. Yeah. 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 So I guess okay. that's it. Oh yeah, somebody's got. Oh well, I mean your your fans are here and they're all loving you. So. Jimmy, Evie, I see everybody. <laughs> Thank you guys, Jim, Jim. <laughs> but um, something else I'll I'll like to know um before we wrap up um is um for you now you've been in you've been working as an actress in the industry for about five years. Five years, yeah. Yeah, five years. And um, the earliest scripts that you have worked on and deliver. Okay, well, Delivery Boy was one of the earlier ones. And um, just seeing like the dynamic of what was put together in Delivery Boy and the other things you've worked on, how would you say Delivery Boy has been in comparison to your other work? And I'm speaking from like a production perspective. Delivery Boy is a definition of small but mighty. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I've been on sets where they have had like five times more than we had to work with on Delivery Boy in terms of crew members, equipment, cast, budget, possibly even 10 times more. And I watched the end product and I'm just like, yeah, no, I picked Delivery Boy over that. It shows mm-hmm. that when your heart is in the right place and you know, you, I, I don't know how to do Delivery Boy is no dash baby. Mm-hmm. So he spent his time and everything he had on that project. And you can see from what you, if I tell you that, there's no need to go into details, but like I've been on bigger sets. I know productions that have been released that had 10 times what we had to work with on Delivery Boy and mm. don't even remotely compare to what Delivery Boy is today. Not yeah. just because I'm an actor on it. Even projects that I've been on, I'd, I'll pick Delivery Boy over because it yeah. shows you that it's not just about having the money to shoot a great film. Indeed. Like yeah. I said, it starts with a great story. Yeah. writers need to be paid more attention to because the quality of your storyline and your film comes down to what is in your writer's head. Indeed. Also having a good director that can translate what is on paper to the screen and make it believable. Mm-hmm. Great acting as well. You know, getting the right, um, you know, set up, props, location, everything, making it, it's... I, I, I'm, it's, I'm running really, out of words. It's, it's really about the ensemble and the exactly. It's yeah. it's a it's a well oiled machine. It's not up to one person. Yeah. It shows you how necessary it is to pay attention to every department in filmmaking. Don't just focus on marketing because a lot of times it's marketing people want to do sell the film, put it on billboards, put it here, put it there. You can get everybody to go watch your film. You probably make your money from it because it's a thousand naira or however much to go to the cinema to watch it. But at the end of the day, when they've watched it, what's the end, what's the end result? What's the end product? Delivery Boy is a film that has sold itself. Yeah. Not one billboard. Not one. We didn't pay any of the big blocks to post Delivery Boy. We didn't pay any. Nothing was done in that regard. So every, it's pretty much word of mouth from people who have watched it and have found it worthy of your attention. So it, it, a good film will sell itself, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Regardless yeah. of wherever you are, there's always an audience for everything, which is why I yeah. think that at the end of the day, it depends on the core, like the core story of what you're selling. Not one billboard for Delivery Boy. We've pushed it actors on our platforms, the um, no dash on his platform, and the rest mm-hmm. of it is word of mouth. I have people that send me DMs, stands up till today. They do Insta stories every day. Go and watch Delivery Boy. I did not pay them. They don't know me yeah. from anywhere. But they like it so much that they think people should watch it. And that's what's selling Delivery Boy for us. Indeed, indeed. Thank you. And, um, okay, I'll just take one last question. And let me say hello to Dimbo. Dimbo, hi. How are you? Dimbo! Yes, and sleep well, NG. Yes, I do. Hi! Yes. My big sister. She's, nah, that's my big sister. <laughs> <laughs> hello, and Jonathan from Cayman Islands. Hi, how are you? Yeah, um... So um, somebody has this question. Um, I, I think this, this is something your, your fans would like to hear. What is your advice to people who want to be in the entertainment industry but have zero support from their parents? Like they say N-O, capital no. So no. what do you advise? Man, that's a tricky, it's a very tricky mm-hmm. situation. I can't, this is a situation where I plead, sorry, sorry about that. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. 
I plead the fifth. This is like asking a white person who's never experienced racism to talk on it. Or I was very privileged because my mom would drive me to every audition, drive me to every set. She would stay with me on set till like 2 a.m. to make sure she drives me back home. She would bring food for myself and the crew members. Like wow. I'm coming from a very privileged place in terms of support from my parents. So for yeah. people who have that obstacle, I'm not exactly sure. I can't you tell can you this is what to do or that's what to do because honestly, I did not experience it. All I would say is if you know deep down in your heart that this is something you want to do, find a way. Find a way because you don't want to live a life where you're regretting not following your dreams or what you know would have brought you joy because you want to please your parents. Even your parents will not be happy with it at the end of the day. I see stories of people who didn't get support, but at the end of it all, you know, when they become successful in it, everybody wants to be affiliated with success. So exactly. I just say, yeah, be dedicated to your, your dreams and your ambitions. And I really hope it works out for you by God's grace. Okay. Thank you. And I would just like to add to that for someone like me who um, I, I did face some resistance when I wanted to be an actress, but I had to prove myself. I had to prove to my parents that this was what I wanted to do. And I was not just finding a way to be on serious. So I had to do the work. And um, from doing the work, you know, um, they, they believe, I mean, I was, my mom believed me, but my dad was just like, no, you have to be a lawyer and stuff. But yeah. I worked hard and I proved to them that, you know what, I'm supposed to do this. And um, it got to a point where they're just like, okay, you know what, this is what this girl wants to do. Allow <laughs> Let's her. just let her do. You <laughs> know, and, and then, you know, um, him coming to see me perform, he was just completely blown away. It was the first show that I did in London and I got like, I was mentioned in the stage in UK, raving about my work. And, you know, so um, you just have to do the work. It, yeah. There's no, there's nothing you decide to do in life that is going to be easy, but it's, it really starts with you. Yeah. What are you going to do? What choices? Are what choice? Yeah, it's up to you. Yeah. It's ultimately up to you. Because even with my support from my parents, me on my own, if I tell you how many times I thought about it, what am I doing in the College of Medicine? Drop out. Is that you? You're looking me right in the face. Should I just drop out from this school? I'm already doing something that I love here that, you know, has so many incentives. I'll graduate from the College of Medicine to what end? Look at it now. What I earn in the hospital for a whole month, I can make from one Instagram post. So, like, it, yeah. at the end of the day, it's weighing your options and realizing, you know what? There's always going to be an obstacle. It's now left to you to handle yeah. it the best way that you think. You oh, Jimama, thank you so, so, so much. Yeah, yeah. face yeah. it head on. Yeah. Thank you for having well, me, thank mommy. You. Well, I think we've come <laughs> to the end of it. We've been here for a while, and I mean, the time has just literally yes gone. about an hour yeah. now yes it is so um I, I don't want to take any more time but i just wanted to say thank you so much um if you haven't seen delivery boy please it's still showing on netflix you should go watch it and I network Yes, yes, I'm here. If you need to rate the movie over 10, so please leave it in the comment to send me a DM and we're going to announce to everyone what you rated um, Delivery Boy. I really enjoyed it. As I said, I was a little disappointed in places, but overall, it was a good watch and I think Nodash did a good job. Jemima, you and your fellow cast did an amazing job. Thank you. Thank for you. I really thank you it. so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Biki. <laughs> and thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And and for your very, very out. nice words. Oh, bless you. And I just want to <laughs> announce that um, we're going to do this again in two weeks. And this time, we're going to be reviewing a book. It's called... A, a lot of you who know me will know that I've read this book. And it's one of my favorite books. And I still hold on to it. It's called... Let me see if you can see it. Tomorrow Die. Die. Yes, yes, by Chimeka Garrett. Is a okay, I'm going to look for that. Yes, I can. Yeah, so it's called Tomorrow Died Yesterday. Yeah, it's available on Amazon.com. Uh, Amazon.com is available. It's going to be available on Okada from tomorrow. Um, you can order it in books and more. I'll leave some information out, out about it. It's called, book, uh, it's called Tomorrow Died Yesterday by Chimeka Garrett. And I will be giving away some free copies. So if you would like to um, get a copy of Tomorrow Died Yesterday, do send me a DM. Jemima, as you're here, you automatically get a free one. Yay! <laughs> 
I was going to say, oh, can I leave and send my DM first? <laughs> Yes, so we're going to be discussing <laughs> the market ideas today in two weeks. So get reading. It's really, really beautiful.